this morning. I want you to look at a verse of scripture uh, that is very familiar. You hear every preacher quote these verses. And this morning, I'm going to go back and use some notes. I used way back over yonder in the old building many years ago and preach to you about it. Mark chapter number 8, and we'll look at verse number uh, 38. Now, everybody preaches on 34. Deny yourself, take up the cross and follow. Everybody preaches on 35. If you save your life, you lose it. Everybody preaches on 36. What will it profit a man if you gain the whole world? Everybody knows them verses. Everybody preaches on 37. What will a man give it to change his soul? But today, it's 38. 38. Look at this verse of Scripture and the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. My, my, my. Boy, what about that? The Lord said, if you was ashamed of him and his words, you know what his words are? That book you got laying in your lap. If you're ashamed of him or his words in this wicked and adulterous generation, that he will be ashamed of you when he comes back. Think about that. And you know what? You want me, you want me to translate that verse for you? He said, he's saying, if people can get out here and walk down the street with purple hair and baby diaper pins stuck through their nose and them shirts that are eight sizes too small for them and they're hanging out all around it and under it, you shouldn't be ashamed of Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross and give you his word. That's what he's saying. Amen. That's modern, up-to-date uh, exposition of that verse. So I want to preach this morning on the subject Ashamed of Jesus. Ashamed of Jesus. It's absolutely inconceivable to me that we could be ashamed of him. It's unbelievable. It's, it's beyond, beyond ridiculous that we would be ashamed of him at work. People you work with, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that we could be ashamed of him. You know why a lot of folks won't witness or give out a track? They're ashamed and they're scared to death. Like these things here. You know why a lot of people don't have them things? They're scared to death. Somebody might think they're a little bit fanatical or overboard. You're pitiful. That's so sad that you're, you're so scared. I mean, big, strong, tough people. I mean, ladies that have college education. I mean, men who, who are big and can fight or do it ashamed that somebody at work might think they're a Christian. I heard about a young man who come, went to college and he went three months and come back and some of his buddies come up and he said, uh, hey man, how's college going? He said, I've been going three months and none of them need to know I go to church. I ain't told them. Oh man, the big baby needs him a pacifier, don't he? I mean, if you, if you don't have the guts to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ and be counted in this crazy generation that you and me live in, you say, well, people might think I'm weird. Have you looked around when you go out lately? Weird is the normal, buddy. I mean, good night, people. I'm going to preach about being ashamed of Jesus. So tighten your seatbelt up a little bit this morning. Sit back. You ain't got nothing else to do. If there is, I don't know if there's a ball game on this season. If it is, it'll be boring. One to win, one to lose. Uh, it, it's wet outside. You ain't going nowhere. Just sit back there this morning and uh, take it like a man, amen, <laughs> or like a woman. I want to say, first of all, this morning, we ought not to be ashamed of him because he was not ashamed of us. He was not ashamed of us. He, they stripped him naked. They beat him. They mocked him out in public. I mean, it'd be just like them taking you over there on the courthouse lawn and cameras on you and, and, and shamefully and, and treated him. You know why he did that? For me and for you. Jesus did that for me and he did it for you. He wasn't ashamed of you and you shouldn't be ashamed of him. I heard about some people in this church that was going to the flea market to be a, a witness for the Lord. And all these men in the church said, we're going to go over there. And I'm, I'm, I can't believe they went anyway. And one guy parked over here 
and he looked back there and there was his Bible and he saw all them people there and he put his Bible in a brown paper bag and carried it across the flea market and over like this, you know. A brown bag in his Bible, really. And uh, I mean, he got over here and he pulled it out when he was with the Christians. He was afraid for somebody to see him carrying a Bible. You know what's wrong with you? You're scared to death. Somebody might think you're one of them weirdos. Man, I've took my Bible in restaurants. I've took it in courtrooms. I've took it in a, I've taken it down and taken a steakhouse and slide it down them. You know what? We're, we're ashamed of him and his words in this crazy, wicked, cussing, adulterous, wicked generation. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We're ashamed of anybody. Amen. Uh, a farmer and his wife, many, many years ago, they didn't have nothing. They was real poor. And the man didn't have nothing but old overalls. The woman, old print dresses. And they saved their money all their life to send their boy to college. And they sent him to a big, they say every dime they could scrape up, they did without. They lived in poverty, drove an old beat up car and everything so their boy could go to college. Well, they sent their son to college, and he'd been there about three months, and uh, he went to college and got in with the hip crowd, you know, and he got all his cool friends and everything, and he started dressing like them. He started acting like them. And one day, it got, uh, it got Christmas or something, and the man and woman, the old man and woman decided they'd go visit their son in college. And they got the old old, old uh, truck cranked up, and he had his overalls on. She had on that old old print dress, and they drove. They had never even been into a big city before. And they pulled in there and found out where it was and got into that place, and they didn't even know where to go. There was buildings everywhere and dormitories. They'd never seen nothing like that in their life. And about that time, there's a gang of boys come walking down the sidewalk. She said, look, honey, there he is. There's our boy. And he was coming down there with all these cool friends of his, you know, and everything. And his old mom and dad got out. And, I mean, they, they, they didn't look nice. They didn't smell nice. I mean, they maybe didn't have all their teeth or something. They said, hey, son, it's good to see you. We've missed you. And that boy looked at him and said, get out of here. I don't know you. And went walking on down the sidewalk with his friends. And was embarrassed for them boys to know that was his mom and daddy. Now, don't say it out loud, but what do you think ought to be done to a brat like that? Don't say it out loud. And what, what, what's God going to think about it? When his son gave his life for us people, died out in public, and we're scared to death to put out a track at work or put a sticker on our, our bench at work. Ladies and gentlemen, he was not ashamed of us. There's a young man preaching on the street one day, just like I am, he's out there saying, the Bible says, the Bible says. And there was pre uh, people coming in, shopping, uh, going in and out. And there's a lady come up to him and she said, young, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And that boy looked back at her and he said, I am ashamed of myself, but I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. That's a good answer, isn't it? That's a good answer. That's my answer completely. I am ashamed of myself, y'all, but I am not ashamed of him because he, thank God, was not ashamed of me. I'm ashamed of Brother Danny. I am. And buddy, but I'm not ashamed of him. He was beat and mocked and made fun of for us. And ladies and gentlemen, he was not ashamed of us. Number two, I want to say this morning, we shouldn't be ashamed of him. Because God will chasten us if we're ashamed of Him. The Lord has a belt. As a matter of fact, He's got a closet with a hundred different ones in it that He can use uh, to chasten us. I read a story about this preacher years ago. And he's driving home. And he's down there, down below Mobile, Alabama, and way on down there near the Florida line. If you've ever been down there, Mobile, Pensacola, uh, in that area, all of that area is down there. It's real flat and swampy and, and rivers and inlets and stuff. And he said to these boys, uh, he said he was driving home and down in this, in this like a little little field where people pull off to, and they go down to the river and they go down there and drink beer and smoke pot and stuff. And there was, they had their pickup trucks, two of them, pulled in there and all these boys was out there partying. And he said while he was driving down the road, he said the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, you need to stop and go talk to them. You need to witness to them. How many of you ever felt, heard that voice speak to you? 
If you ain't, something wrong with you. I'm telling you, it happens to me all the time. Had me yesterday in the motel up there. Uh, the ladies cleaning the room down through there. The, the women that worked at the desk. I give them tracks. I talk to them. And it happens to me all the time. And he said, uh, you need to talk to them people down there. And the preacher immediately, the first voice you hear is the Lord. Then you hear all these other voices say, well, uh, I'm, I'm late and I need to hurry and get home. And, and Lord, I'll, I'll get them. I promise I will. And he drove on down the road. And the Lord said, you need to go down and talk to them boys. And he said, but Lord, I, I promise, I'm busy right now. I, them boys, they're down there partying and everything. They don't want to hear it. I, I'll just go on home. And he went on home. And he, the, usually that first voice is the Lord. And then them other 500, the devil in your flesh, taking up excuses why you shouldn't do what God told you to. And he, he went on home. He'd been home about 30 minutes. His phone rang and said, Preacher, get up here. Get up here. Something happened in the community. And he drove up the road and he come to that spot. He saw one of them pickup trucks off half down the bank. He saw the lights flashing. He saw the AM, AMS, the ambulance workers there. He thought, Oh, Lord, something awful's happened. Them boys were standing around crying. And there in the middle of the road well, it was a body with a sheet laid over it. And an elderly lady had come out to get the mail and to check the mail and was walking across the road. And them boys come by and killed that lady just like that. And he got down and he said, God, if I'd have done what you told me to, this might have never happened. I, don't, I wasn't going to mention this, but... Can't, Carrie called me last night. I guess they're watching right now. I don't know if y'all heard about it, but yesterday there was an accident. A young man that come to their track over there and, and, and snow hill up, up the road there and rides motorcycles. And he come, rides the track, and him and his dad, it was on the Charlotte News. I don't know if y'all heard it or not. There was a, they had an accident yesterday. And him and his dad in their motorhome was killed. 23 years old. The young man died. And she said, Daddy, that boy come to our youth rally a few years ago with all of them and got saved. And I said, really? And she said, yeah. Some of y'all might remember they had him in a wheelchair. He had broke, broke his leg on a motorcycle and they had him over there at the fairground on a, on, and they had him in a wheelchair. And she said, I remember exactly where he was at. They pushed him to the altar and somebody led him to the Lord. And that boy got saved at the giant spring youth rally that we have every year. That's how important it is that we're not ashamed of our Lord and take a stand for Him. People's lives are at stake and you'll be chastened if you're not. My, my, my. There's been a many a person cry over a casket, over a mama or a daddy and said, I didn't tell them, I didn't tell them, or a friend or a loved one. That every time you go by that cousin, that house, and something said they're not saved, they're not saved, one day they're going to be a wreath on that door. One day they're going to be gone, people. One day our opportunities are over. You, listen, we, we need bus drivers. We need bus workers. We need, some, we need somebody who's not ashamed of the Lord and what He's done for you. You hear me? God will chasten you. If you're not, I heard about this old boy. He was Jewish. And uh, when an Orthodox Jew really gets saved, he's disowned by his family, if they're a strong enough Jewish family. Because the Jewish people, even though they were God's earthly, physical, chosen people, rejected the Messiah, and they only believe the Old Testament to this day. They have Genesis to Second Chronicles. They are all 39 books of your Bible. There's no such thing as lost books of the Bible. That's the devil told somebody that, and you told you, and you didn't do your homework and believed it. There ain't no lost books of the Bible. There's 39 books in the Old Testament, and Jesus himself affirmed that. When he's here, we talked about Zechariah and Abel. That's Genesis to 2 Chronicle in the Old Testament. 39 books in the canon. Well, this Jew boy got saved. He got saved, and he went around talking about Jesus, and his family disowned him. And, brother, he took a stand and went down there. And he went to one of them camp meetings down there in Greenville, South Carolina, when Dr. Harold Seitler used to pastor the Tabernacle Baptist Church down there. That's before some of y'all's time. And I remember when I first got saved, man, that church, I mean, there'd be 
1,500 people in there and two or 300 up shouting at the same time. And uh, he's down there, Dr. Sidler's, he had never seen nothing like that in his life. And boy, he got in there that night, they said, and he stood up for the Lord, and them people were shouting, and they started singing that song, give me that old-time religion, give me that old-time religion. And they come to that verse where it said, it was good for our fathers, it was good for our mothers, it was good, you know, they went on. And they come to that verse that said, it was good for the Hebrew children, it was good for the Hebrew children. And he heard that, and he said, what? It was good for the Hebrew children. And boy, they said, he jumped up and got up there, and he said, stop! And everybody got real quiet and he said, what you mean it was good for the Hebrew children? It is good for the Hebrew children. And boy, he had a time. I'm telling you, that old boy got it. That old boy got it. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said, he that believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. He'll chasten you if you are. Thirdly this morning, let me say this. You'll backslide if you're ashamed of Jesus. If you keep it quiet, you'll wind up going back out in the world. The best thing to do when you start a new job is let everybody know right off the bat, don't be a smart act, don't be self-righteous, but let them know that you're a Christian. Right there is one of the best ways I know of, right there. When they see your car pull in the parking lot, you're, I cannot believe some of y'all scared to do that. You're scared. I hear all your excuses. I hear them all. But the truth is you're scared. That's peer pressure. Lord, don't fuss at you teenagers. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Lord, you will backslide on God if you're ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got a call several years ago. Been several now for sure. Long time ago. And uh, I'd been out of high school 10 years, and somebody called and said, Danny, we're having our high school reunion. Now, I wasn't saved in high school. Now, you've heard my testimony. I got saved after I got out of high school. And thank the Lord I did. Daddy put me in school a year early, and I got out early, and I got saved. God's hand was on my life all the way from kindergarten all the way. Matter of fact, I remember when I was little. I remember when I was little, I thought there's more to life than just eating and, and playing guitars and basketball. I remember thinking that when I was growing up thinking there's got to be more. And buddy, there is more. And I know it. I don't think like that no more. I've got all I can handle. And, and i tell you what, I, I, uh, uh, I got this call. They said, Danny, we want you to come. I'm surprised they even called me because I got saved the year after I got out of school and started preaching and we started a church there in Mary and everybody knew it was the largest church in town. At that time. And uh, they said, we want you to come to our 10th High school reunion. I said, uh, well, where's it going to be at? They said, over at the Lake Club uh, in, in Marion. And, and I said, uh, well, what's going to be going on? And they said, now, I know, I know, Danny, I know. Said, we just want you to come. You're a big part of our, our class and blah, blah, blah. And I said, what's going to be going on? She, they said, now, now there's going to be alcohol served and they're going to have a belly dancer. And I said, a belly dancer? And Nebo? I can only imagine. Uh, and, I, and, they, I said, I, and I made up my mind, I ain't going. And they said, but now that's going to be after dinner and everything. You can leave if you want to. And I come that close to saying, no. And it's like the Lord said, go. I said, all right, I'll be there. So I prayed and I prayed, and you know exactly why I went. I didn't go to see them. I'm telling you, brother, we went there that night. Here, well, there's all in there. Oh, hey, bunch of fake junk. I can't stand. I can't stand being around much people. But, but I've been around Christian people and been real so long. I can't stand fake stuff. I can't stand being around a bunch of, well, how are you? Oh, really? Well, I, oh, shut up. You redneck. You just as heck as I am. Who are you trying? You went up north two years trying to talk like a Yankee. I said, how you doing? And, and they said, well, hi, Danny. I wanted to just pick my nose. I didn't. I didn't. But I, I said, good night. Where, where are you people trying? Well, I work. And, and then we sat down to eat, and some of my teachers was there, my high school teachers. We sat around this big old table like this, and, they, and the, whoever it was in charge said, now what we're going to do uh, before they bring the steak dinner, uh, we're all going to go around the table and tell what, what we do now with our life. And I said, okay, here goes. Lord help me. God help me. God help me. You say, you didn't. I did. You say, Brother Danny. Right? Yes, sir. I said, Lord help me. 
Lord help me. And one of them said, well, I work at Ford Motor Company, and then I work, I've been in, in D.C., and I work for the government now, and I've turned out, and I have two kids, and da, 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 and, I, and, you know, and everybody, oh, isn't that great? Isn't that great? And it come my turn. I stood up and I said, well, good to see everybody here. And I guess all of you know that I got saved after we got out of high school. I didn't say, I'm in the ministry now. I didn't say I've chosen this vocation uh, with my life. And, and we have, nope, nope. I, I made, I said, I got saved. Hey, if you got saved, what's wrong with saying it? It's a good Bible word. He that believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be what? Saved. Don't be ashamed. Tell somebody you're saved. Say, saved from what? Hell. You ashamed of that? What is wrong with you? I said, I got saved after we got out of high school. I guess everybody, and heads were dropping all around that. And they were going, oh, God. I preached a sermon. I said, and, and you know what? I love every one of y'all. And I want to see you in heaven. Oh, my God. You talk, talk about, I hope the belly dancer was in there. I didn't see her. Thank God. I just imagined. Big Bertha coming out of there or something. Uh, but, but anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I, I, I thought, I thought, but I'm going to drop it on them while I'm here. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm telling you, brother, ladies and gentlemen, I said, and I got saved by the grace. And after it was over, you would have thought that I had some kind of disease. And one of them, one of them told the other one, said, well, if that's what he wants, that's fine. But I don't think he should push it on everybody else. Now that right there is what's got some of y'all scared right there. You're terrified somebody at work might think you're a little bit fanatical. Well, you only got one life, brother. And if God's done something real, and I'm not talking about being a smart aleck. I mean let the world know whose side you're on. If you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. You say, well, I, don't, I choose just to witness with my life. Your life can't lead nobody to the Lord. You know how you leave from the Lord? With your lips. Your life makes them thirsty. Your lips tells them how to get saved. Your lips and your life, your walk and your talk supposed to say the same thing. You don't win people with your walk. You lead them to the Lord with your talk. You make them thirsty with your walk. I like Eugene and Curly, them boys coming out. You know, I admire them boys. I hope they hear this. I, I admire them guys. They've been preaching on the subways in New York City for 25 years. It's a miracle to God they ain't been killed. I mean, you get your throat cut. They preach in, on street corners where it's nothing but Islam and Muslims around them. They've been threatened so many times. You know, you hear him tell them stories. And I'm telling them guys got some guts, y'all. I, I mean, they've got more guts than any football player I know of. I mean, take a football player in the middle of New York City and say, stand up there and holler, Jesus saves. I'm telling you, them guys got some. And, and I believe that's why they've stayed right all these years because they kept with it. See, if you keep talking about him, you won't backslide. Keep talking about him. Don't be ashamed. You'll backslide if you are. Number four, you'll lose your assurance. You'll lose your assurance of salvation if you don't speak up for the Lord once in a while. Speak up for him every day. Um, there's, a, there's a guy down in Florida years ago, and they said he is wicked, he is mean as a devil. And everybody had witness to him. Because a lot of people say, well, I don't know the Bible that much, and I'll, I'll just be honest with you, preacher. I'm afraid to bring it up at work because I don't really know the Bible that much, and I wouldn't want to. Yeah, well, number one, why don't you know the Bible enough? Can you read? Are you over 12 or 13? Why don't you know the Bible old enough? That's a good question. Why don't you know, oh, the, know the Bible good enough? That's a good question, isn't it? What's your answer to that? Well, this guy run a hardware store. And he was mean as the devil. And the preacher and everybody in, in the community tried to witness to him. He wouldn't, he'd cuss them out, tell them to get out of his store. And they had a guy went to that church who was, um, let's say, not quite as on the level as everybody else. That's, that's nice, I know it's a little bit slow. And uh, every church has them kind of people. We, we've got, we, we, <laughs> we've had plenty, trust me. 
We've had plenty. I can tell you stories. But anyway, this guy was about, he just was a slow. He was, he was mentally, very mentally challenged. And, he, he, and, I, and he, they, he went out to that guy's hardware store. This guy who didn't know the Bible, didn't know no doctrine, walked right in there like this. That guy, he said, hey! And that guy said, yes, sir, can I help you? He said, you won't go to heaven? And that guy said, no. He said, well, go on to hell then. And turned around and walked out the door. <laughs> How's that for a witnessing time? And you know what? They said about two days later, the pastor's phone rang. And it was that man. He said, Pastor, uh, one of your parishioners was in here the other day. And he told me to go to hell. And, and you know, that bothered me. I'd never heard it put like that before. <laughs> Guy got saved. He got saved. Guy got saved. You know why? That old boy wasn't ashamed. You know what some of y'all's problem is? I guess you're too smart. You just know so much you ain't worth a dime for God. Woo! Preach it, Pastor. Amen. Listen, it's getting youth rally time, y'all. It ain't no time to be ashamed of Jesus. Tell you another story. Honest truth. You, you think I'm crazy? This honest truth. I was a spruce pine up above Marion, 20 miles above Marion. If y'all don't know where spruce pine is. I was coming back home on a Monday evening. And it was getting youth, it was about this time of year, a few weeks before the youth rally. And I stopped at the Super Walmart over in Spruce Pine that they had built on my way home. And I was, I was actually going to buy some uh, fabric because a lot of times we'll use a certain color or thing like, like, like this year we're going to use that orange right there and this lime green and orange T-shirts and stuff. And uh, um, I was going to look for some. So I was looking for this fabric, and I went back there and pushed my buggy back there. I was getting some more stuff, too. And I found some I wanted, and I couldn't find nobody to help me. Isn't it the weirdest thing when you're in there, and you're, you want somebody to help you in a store? You can't find nobody. Uh, if you just want to look, you'll have five people saying, Can I help you? Can I help you? Uh, yeah, you can help me. Go on. Uh, uh, but that's what you want to say. But anyway, I couldn't find nobody. And I looked around and walked around. Like the other day, I said, Can somebody help me with a paint? Somebody? And I looked, couldn't find nobody working there. And I found some cloth that I wanted, and it said something like a dollar seventy-four um, or dollar seventy-five, something like that per yard. And there's only like a little bit on there. And uh, I said, "Well, I'll just take that." And I put it in my buggy. And I walked around there, and went back there, and, went to, and I started checking out. And that woman said, uh, "You'll have to have somebody measure this cloth, sir, because we don't have." A... I said, "Ma'am, they, there wasn't nobody back there." I said, "There's not just a little bit on there. It's dollar seventy-four." It's two yards, it's $3 and a half, I'll give you a tip. Just, I'll give you $3 and a half for it. And she said, I'm sorry, we can't do that. I said, I'll give you more money. It couldn't be, got to be less than $4. I'll just give you $4 or whatever. She said, I'm sorry, you'll have to take it back there. They're going to roll it out on a little table and exactly measure it and then take scissors and cut it. And I said, oh, man, i got to go all. So I went all the way back there. And I found out why I couldn't find nobody working. They was having an employees meeting. And so I went back there, and I put my, my cloth on that little table, and that woman was going to roll it out, and there was about 20 Walmart employees standing around there in a half circle. Men, women, training, they was all standing around like that. And there they was, just standing there. And here's me. Well, you, you can't take somebody like me and put them up in front of a crowd of people like that. We got a one-track mind. That's all I've ever done. And something said, preach. And I said, that's the honest truth. I said, it's good to see all of you here tonight. That's the honest truth. I said, did everybody go to church yesterday? Got right with the Lord? And they, looked, they thought that I was some big wig from Walmart. They thought I was like a general, man, you know, I, I was, you know, clean. Up. They thought, Oh, this is our boss man, and, he, and he's fussing at us for not going to church. I said, hallelujah. And, I, and you know what? They looked like they were about to have a heart attack. You say, you did. I did. And I felt good about it. I went out the door after that, and one of those old ladies, you know them older ones that stand at the door? She said, 
I appreciate that, young man. I agreed with everything you said. <laughs> I said amen. I'm telling you, brother, you know, you'll, you'll lose your assurance. I, I was sure I was saved on the way down the mountain. It'll help you. It'll help you. It'll help you. It'll help you. Yeah, I read about this guy down in Alabama, and he worked in a, at a coal furnace, uh, in a, fur, a furnace where they kept it like, I don't know, 1,000 degrees, kept a hot, burning fire all the time, and he worked with this guy that cussed. Anybody in here work with somebody that just got a dirty mouth and they can't open it without cussing? I see hands all over. Don't that make you just, I'm telling you, you know where that comes from? It comes out of the heart. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And if somebody talks dirty, it's because their heart's dirty. That includes your husband or wife or you. Anybody that talks dirty has a dirty heart. And they try to make you think it's cute so you'll lie it. But that old boy, he cussed and he cussed and he cussed. And finally, this guy took all that he could take. And one day, he opened that furnace like that and he grabbed a hold of that guy's neck and pushed over and said, you see that? And the guy said, yeah, yeah. He, goes, he said, well, that's an icebox compared to hell and that's where you're going if you don't get saved. He said that guy never said another cuss word from then on. <laughs> I'm not recommending you do that. But I'm telling you one thing, brother, he wasn't ashamed of the Lord. He wasn't ashamed of the Lord. Amen? Number five. Number five. You know why you shouldn't be ashamed of the Lord? Because people will go to hell if we're, not, if we're ashamed of Jesus. We're not one of these churches, and I'm not one of these ignorant preachers that believes all the elect's going to be saved no matter what we do or don't do. That's heresy. That's heresy. If everybody's going to be saved, going to be saved anyway, why did the Lord say go into all the world and preach the gospel? Why do we send out missionaries? Biggest hypocrite nut I know of are preachers who believe everybody's going to be saved, going to be saved anyway, and still put out missionaries. Please, give me a break. Give us that money. We'll do something good with it. Keep supporting you missionaries because your debt is four o'clock. Your backslid is a devil. People will go to hell if God's people are ashamed of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Now, somebody had a bumper sticker on their car not long ago. And all it said was on the back of their car, and it said, at the end of the road, you'll meet God. And a guy got behind them. And I turned around, and he said, at the end of the road, you'll meet God. At the end of the road, you'll meet God. And there's a truck driver, and he pulled off on the side of the road and bowed his head and asked Jesus to come into his heart. You know what's wrong with some of you folks? You, won't, you don't like confrontation. You don't want any kind of friction. You want the world to love you. You want everybody to love you. You want to be nice and nice. You don't want to bother nobody. Listen, real Christianity is salt. Salt, brother. It burns. You know what we're taught today? Be sweet. Sugar. He didn't say you're the sugar of the earth. He said you're the salt of the earth. People go to hell if we're ashamed of Jesus. That's why I like, I like him... I never watched football much, but when I did, I used to like, I used to like it when they, somebody put them big John 3.16 sign in the end zone. I thought, amen. God, I think they finally stopped them from doing that. Somebody got under conviction. I used to like them, like old Tebow and them would put a verse of scripture on their helmet or their face. I, I liked George Foreman who would stand up for the Lord, amen, and, and, and be a witness for God. Thank God. I appreciate uh, people like old, uh, that old boy, that made them movies, you know, got saved, movie star, Kirk Cameron. I appreciate, I'm not saying he's, I ain't saying he's right doctrine or nothing, but thank God they've got enough guts to stand up in Hollywood and say, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. People go to hell. I put them up all the time. I used to put them stickers up that says no water in hell. I used to have these stickers, and I'd go to the airport fly somewhere, and I'd take one and stick it on the water fountain, no water in hell. There'll be no water now. And then I'd go over here and sit down like this. And this guy come by, and he'd have, a, he'd have his briefcase, you know, big businessman, wearing about a $500 suit. And he's on his way to New York City, and he'd be walking over there like that, and he'd go, look like he's seen a rattlesnake. And I said, get him, get him, Lord, get him. No water in hell, no water in hell. I don't, listen, I hope when I get to heaven, I'll see some of them people say, thank you for not being ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ in this wicked and sinful, adulterous generation. The last thing I'm going to say this morning, I'm through. 
I want you to listen real carefully to what I'm getting ready to say. You know why you shouldn't be ashamed of Jesus? Because you're going to live in heaven forever and ever and ever with a bunch of people that was not ashamed of Him. I'm talking people who stood the test. I'm talking people who they said, deny Him or we'll cut your head off. When ISIS cut your head off, it ain't like a guillotine. Just boom. They saw it. You feel it. They do hundreds of people like that. They're doing them today. You say, well, that'll never happen. It's already happening. Thank God for brothers and sisters in Christ who you might live right beside some of them people like that. But here you are in heaven. What, what happened to you? I got my head cut off because I wouldn't deny Jesus Christ. What happened to you? I lived in Morganton. <laughs> did, what did you suffer for the Lord? Uh... uh one time we had to stay at the church until 15 after 12. That's us. That's our generation. And I even got up and went back Sunday night. I, I was dedicated. We're a sick bunch of pitiful, sorry outfit claiming to be God's people. Listen, if the devil come in this county like he's doing plays in Sudan, you wouldn't have a handful at most churches next Sunday morning. You know it and I know it. They put men in prison and played tapes of people screaming and told them it was their wives and kids and said, deny Jesus Christ or we'll kill them. There'll be many a woman in heaven that you'll live close to that the last thing she ever saw before they burned her to stake was her babies being carried off to a convent by some nuns. The last thing she saw. I'm talking, you ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs? Get you some guts, buddy. Read something like that. Read about a 17-year-old girl who they took up there and they said, you take the mass. So that's when the Catholic Church ruled the world. That's why they call it the Dark Ages. Until the Reformation in 1500. You don't get that on TV. They just say the church. It wasn't the church. It was the Catholic, Roman, Catholic Church. Get it straight if you're going to talk history. They said, take the mass or you'll burn at the stake. She said, I'm afraid I might meet the devil at the mass. 17 years old. They put gunpowder in their mouths and blew their head off. They tied the women down who were pregnant, sliced their belly open, and let the pigs eat the babies out of their body. You're going to live with these people. We're going to be with them forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Right beside them, maybe. About Father Hooper. There's an old man lives in called Father Hooper, and they don't call him Father Hooper because he's a priest. They call him Father because as an endearment, he was just a sweet old man. Everybody loved him. And they said, deny the Lord or we'll burn you to stake. Tens of thousands. Nero used to light up his garden at night, have a party. You know how he lit the grounds? With Christians burning all over that place. Tens of thousands thousands but I might not get that promotion if I give out tracks that's us and they took Father Hooper up there that old white headed man and they tied him to that stake and some of the brethren got him and said Father if God's with you up there and you can stand the flames would you raise your hands up in the fire he said I will they put him up there and tied him. They'd tie him up with chains because ropes would burn off. And they put chains down here and they'd have a bunch of brush sticks all the way around them. And they'd light that fire and they lit it and it started burning up his legs and it went out. They couldn't get it to burn. And he stood there and suffered for a while. Burn fire on your legs. Lick big red welts burning up your legs. And then they got it going again. The flames started coming up and got into his beard. And the fire just turned and they finally saw his head go over like that. And they said he's gone. And right about that time, the old two little old bony arms went up and went. <laughs> Clapped three times and fell over. And he said, God's with me in the fire. You know, you're going to live with people like that? They hung them upside down. 
on strings with wire around their heels and took a pistol and shot their stomach and their intestines, let, them, let their intestines fall out and hung them upside down. That's the way they left them. I mean, you're going to live with these people. We're going to live right beside the people who suffered and bled and died for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying be a smart aleck. I'm not talking, I, don't, I can't stand people that want to go out and be self-righteous and brag about how holy they are and how much. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about just being a faithful, consistent witness and not be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to live in heaven with people who is not ashamed. Let's stand by our heads in prayer.